Hello, my name is Pam and I'm going to be discussing the most common symptoms of candida overgrowth and why it is so common in all chronic disease, including autoimmune and cancer. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Pam Bartha. I am the author of Become a Wellness Champion and founder of Live Disease Free. And it is my huge privilege to be here talking to you today about fungal overgrowth. And we're going to just talk about candida. We've come to learn that there are other types of fungi. There's actually several hundred types of fungi that can cause disease in humans. But candida, especially candida albicans, is the most common yeast or fungal pathogen, human pathogen. And many of you have heard about it for many years. I just want to say hello. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Troy, Tiffany, Elaine. Thank you already for the hearts and the thumbs up. Uh, please type your questions in the question box as we go through the presentation. It won't be extremely long today, depending on how many questions there are. But this is a really important topic. And it's very important that we, because Candida overgrowth is kind of this background quiet thing, but there are some very subtle symptoms that we all face with. Most of us have had some degree of candida issues, maybe women with yeast infections, but a lot of us have never considered it to be something that's linked with chronic disease and how important it is in chronic disease. So I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis 30 years ago. I was just 28 years old. I was slim. I was healthy. I'd been healthy all my life. I was raising a family. I had two small children. And I thought I was a healthy person. And I had no idea that I was like literally heading towards multiple sclerosis. So one sunny day, I noticed this black spot in my vision. And I just started to rub it and rub it. And within two or three days, it was a complete blackout, optic neuritis. I didn't know what it was. But I, was, I went to see an eye specialist right away because I was really concerned, even within the second day, like, what is this? And they said, it's optic neuritis. We'll just watch it, pay attention to it. But then by the third day, it had been a complete blackout with my left eye. And so very quickly, he referred me to one of the best MS clinics in Canada. It's on the West Coast in Vancouver. It's an MS hospital university MS clinic. And there I was told that I had MS and I was told that you're going to be completely disabled in time. There's nothing you can do. It's, we don't know what causes it. There is no cure and good luck basically. And I left there and I felt that my life was over. I was devastated, but God had other plans. And by the grace of God and a lot of work on my part and a lot of diligence and research uh, the very first thing that I, well, the second thing, the first thing I learned about was antihistamines and how that can be helpful to help you to sleep, but also to help manage MS symptoms way back in like Dr. Mass from Holland. I learned that from her. But the second thing I learned about very quickly after was candida. There were at least four medically trained doctors that wrote books about candida overgrowth in the body. This was 30 years ago. These doctors knew that when they treated fungus in the body, candida, which is a type of yeast, which is a type of fungus, when they treated that in the body, people with all kinds of chronic diseases improved significantly. So this would be the first book I found was the book, uh, The Yeast Connection by Dr. William Crook. Then there was The Missing Diagnosis by Dr. Orion Truss. Then there was Candida by Dr. Luke DeShepper, and also a Canadian doctor, Dr. Rona, the Comprehensive Yeast Guidebook. I bought, not, not all at the same time, but they would come out every few months. We had this Alive magazine, uh, health magazine, and we had these tiny little health food stores, nothing like we have today. And I would always be looking like, is there a new book? Is there a new book that something that could help me? I didn't have the internet. And those doctors taught me a lot about candida. They didn't know a lot about the other types of infections, but definitely candida. So I started to treat candida. And then I, and I, the more I focused on treating fungal infections and then trying to treat parasites and just working in integrative health, you know, with different practitioners, tried lots of things. A lot of things did not help me. 
but focusing on treating infections, correcting this out of balance, the way that I was really out of balance, too many bad disease causing microbes and not enough health promoting microbes. I've been able to stay MS free for the past 30 years and live a beautiful life, fully active, had the huge privilege of coaching over 600 people in the Live Disease Free Academy. We have a lot of wellness champions. Some of them are joining us right now. It has been such an honor and such a privilege. And these guys are the trailblazers. They are the leaders. They are the forward thinkers. We just had our call last night. And the insights that we're getting from you know, the treatments and what they're using and, and what's working and what isn't working. And it's just so exciting. Like these guys are changing history. But today we're going to focus on candida. Last time, not last week, but the week before, I talked about parasite symptoms. So if you want to go back and listen to those, it's on Live Disease Free Facebook page or Live Disease Free YouTube channel. I've got a YouTube channel also. And you'll find them there. And you'll find that we're starting to post some of the successes of our students on, on social media too and on YouTube. Uh, they are helping us to get the word out. They are helping us to bring change. Anyhow, back to candida. So candida is a type of fungus. It's a type of yeast. So there's different molds and there's yeast and they're all fungi, but we're gonna talk about candida albicans. And it's called a commensal organism, meaning that it's always present in us. We don't have to go traveling to pick it up. It's in our bodies. We, I'm not sure how we pick it up, but it just comes through the air, through um, going through the birth canal, et cetera. But it's part of our microbiota, the microbes that live in our body. And if we have a healthy ecosystem, so in our digestive tract, remember I've shared on previous videos about how we carry thousands of different microbes inside of us. Could be up to 10,000 different types of species. And when we have this healthy ecosystem, it could be two or three pounds of microbes inside of, especially in our intestines, then we would have a, a blanket of health promoting different types of not just bacteria but other microbes that are health promoting but and then we would have just a small number of candida and other you know they would be pathogenic if they're in a higher population in our body but just we are exposed to different things whether it's a parasite whatever so in a healthy gut in a healthy microbiome we have lots of healthy health promoting microbes and just a few little candida seeds. They look like seeds. They're a round circle. That is the, the non-invasive, non-pathogenic form of candida. It looks like a little round cell or a little round seed. And if you have a little bit of the bad microbes present, but mostly you have this thick blanket of health-promoting microbes, you don't have any bad symptoms. It just, you're healthy. They're, these good microbes, they do so many things for us. But the problem is, and this is one of the things I was going to address, why is this so common in chronic disease and, and cancer, like autoimmune and cancer? Because many of us have been on antibiotics and other medications in our lifetime very often before the age of 10, where it has really decreased the health-promoting microbes in our body, but we, it does not affect a lot of these bad, negative, pathogenic microbes like candida. So the antibiotics will wipe out the good guys, the good bacteria, but will not touch the candida or other fungi. So now they have all this room, and guess what they love to eat, right? Guess what feeds them? Sugars and processed carbohydrates. So because we live in a time when we have access to so many, not just sugars, but also processed carbs, then when we eat the processed carbs, they're broken down into sugars inside of our body, and then we get a higher blood sugar level, and that will feed the infections throughout our body, the, the candida. So it starts to become out of balance in our gut, in our intestines, and starts to grow and grow, and it changes from this little round circular cell or egg and it starts to bud and it starts to grow roots and it starts to grow an extensive root structure and it starts to penetrate in our tissue it breaks through the intestinal lining and it moves into the blood and it moves into different parts of the body and 
doctors are so used to just looking for acute infections where you have a high fever and you have redness and swelling like strep throat or bronchitis, but they don't have the tests and they haven't been trained in, in really understanding and recognizing chronic silent infections in the body. So fungal infections, they can just grow and grow and grow slowly, not causing a lot of problem at the beginning, but in time they produce problems. Why? Because we know with Candida albicans, it can produce over 70 different poisons, probably more than that, but that's what's been documented. Things like acetaldehyde, so like neurotoxins, like acetaldehyde and other toxins like formaldehyde, and uh, it can actually suppress your immune system. They can produce enzymes that actually eat your antibodies, which directly suppresses your immune system. I'm just gonna pull up some of the different things here just so that I don't miss any of them. They also produce tons of organic acids. How many of you guys are, you, you kind of feel like you're acidic and you've heard about this alkaline diet and you wanna make yourself more alkaline? Well, you can definitely eat lots of good healthy vegetables which are very alkalizing. So with our eating plan, the Live Disease Free Eating Plan, we eat at least like 70% of our plate would be made up of vegetables. But if you have an overgrowth of candida, also bacteria too, but candida, they are notorious for producing tons and tons of acids, organic acids. And so they make you acidic. So you can just keep eating vegetables and you'll still have all these acids produced from candida. It's very important to um, treat the infections, the candida infections, then the acids are not produced anymore. And then when you go to work at alkalizing your body, then you actually do become more alkaline. One important thing too with candida albicans is it produces tons of alcohol through the fermentation process. Like how do we make wine and beer? We use different yeasts, right? And alcohol is produced. So some of the effects of the candida can be the foggy head, the poor memory, uh, all of that. That is part of the alcohol. And there's actually a technical term that the medical community uses. It's called auto brewery, meaning that if somebody has a ton of candida overgrowth, possibly other fungi too, but for sure candida albicans, a lot of it in their digestive tract and they eat a very heavy carbohydrate meal, there is so much alcohol produced that they actually act like they're drunk and they haven't had a single drink and that's called auto brewery. So this is something that's known in, in the medical. It's not probably used a lot that term, but it's definitely something that is coined from the medical standard of care community. Also for people that have, let's say asthma, where they have the tightening of the airways and a lot of mucus is produced, so leukotrienes, that is another chemical that our body will produce in response to candida, but also the candida albicans can produce it, and also prostaglandins. Again, our body can produce these, these little tiny molecules, but the infections can also. So instead of, like with the prostaglandins, that would be associated when we have migraines and we have PMS, we maybe have those terrible cramps. That is the pain molecule. This is with, uh, premature labor and all kinds of other different pain. So what do we do? We reach over for ibuprofen when in fact we should be treating these infections that are causing these symptoms in us. That is the key to health. So candida albicam can cause all of these different chemicals and more. And again, if it's present in its non-disease state where it's that little round cell and there's just a few dispersed, no problem, no symptoms, no issues. But when we disrupt our ecosystem, we decrease those good microbes, the yeast can now grow. They love it when we eat all the processed carbs. When you're eating all of the, the high sugar foods and the white foods and binging on carbs, the candida is binging along with you, producing lots of poisons, making you feel horrible you can actually feel like the way I used to feel before I knew all of this, before I was even diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, 
if I ate the wrong foods the night before, the next day I would tell my family, I feel like I was hit by a truck. And that is acetaldehyde. That's how that chemical makes you feel, plus all of the other chemicals too, but especially acetaldehyde. That is the hangover chemical. So it's important to understand when I talk about all the symptoms, because then you can start to understand, man, if it can produce all these chemicals, yeah, I can see that it can affect us in so many different ways. The sad reality is 30 years ago, those doctors that I mentioned, they knew this and they were helping people to recover from chronic disease 30 years ago. But somehow their work has just been, I don't know, fallen to the side. And yes, we do run into candida information from the health food stores, also from online different articles, but it's so important to understand the significance of this. And I think a big thing too is how challenging it is to treat. If you have chronic disease and you've had candida overgrowth for years, it takes time. It takes just cycling and cycling. And you can't just do a, a one month or a two month you know, candida diet. Again, the, the traditional candida diets had a lot more carbohydrates than what we're doing right now. We're having a lot more success by lowering the carbs, by lowering the food. But again, you have to also treat. And it is so important to understand that it's not just a surface infection, but when you're dealing with chronic disease or when you've got that disease label, you're dealing with that root structure that is deep into your tissue. And a few little herbs are not going to clean that up by itself. They're going to help. And yes, you can use them in conjunction, but you have to understand what you're dealing with. So today, our standard of care medical community, they still consider candida to be a nuisance. They think, oh, well, women get candida infections, uh, vaginal yeast infections. So just, you know, take Diflucan for three days and you'll be fine. Or you've got fingernail or toenail fungus. And that's pretty much it. They don't understand that it is part of chronic disease because it's not just the nuisance symptoms we have but it has this way of suppressing our immune system with all of the different chemicals that are produced. And I share in a lot of my, in my free training, how Dr. Alex Vasquez, he has pulled together research. This was a few years ago where they found that there's at least 17 different ways that these different infections cause immune dysfunction in our body. So that is really important to understand. So there's many ways that, they can um, evade our immune system and, and our immune system isn't dealing with it. So some of the common symptoms, let's get to those. So the very, very first ones would be strong cravings for bread and sugar and sweet things, baked goods and pop, anything sweet, just having a sweet tooth, feeling tired and feeling run down, and yeah, if you have a late night or maybe you're working on something occasionally, that's different. But if you kind of find like you're constantly feeling like you're run down, that there's just something not right. I'm not feeling like I used to feel. That is definitely can be a definite sign of fungal overgrowth, candida overgrowth. And then all of the head things like having a hard time concentrating, feeling like you have that brain fog, poor memory, lack of focus. And then mood things, like you're feeling irritable and mood swings, anxiety, depression. Then we get to the digestive complaints. So constipation is a really big one and gas and bloating. Diarrhea can be, sometimes it's a mixture of diarrhea and constipation. And yes, there is overlap between parasites and between fungus. And so I'm trying to keep really strong symptoms of fungus here together on this uh, but there can be some overlap. And then when we look at the skin issues, so whether it is rashes or um, hives, eczema, psoriasis, all those types of things are very often linked with fungus. And then also we can have fingernail and toenail fungal infections. Dandruff is another one. I don't know if some of you know, but that that shampoo, uh, Head and Shoulders, it has Nizerol in it, which is an antifungal medication that you would use on your scalp to get rid of the fungal overgrowth. That's, that is what's causing the dandruff. Athlete's foot, ringworm, 
and as I mentioned before, toenail fungus. And then for women, the vaginal infections and vaginal itch and urinary tract infections and rectal itch for men and women, also jock itch for men. So seasonal allergies are definitely linked with fungus and parasites also. So both of them, itchy eyes, the chronic uh, sinus issues definitely linked with fungal overgrowth. Um, there is a study in my book, Become a Wellness Champion, where I, uh, I share a study and they scraped the sinuses of 200 people that suffered with chronic rhinitis. That means that their sinuses were always congested and, and a lot of times they'll get secondary bacterial infections. And I think it was in like 199 or it was like almost 100% of those people, it was fungal, fungus growing inside their sinuses. And they said, oh, we should call it fungal rhinitis because that's really what it is. And today they're still not recognizing the fungal comp the impact of fungal infections in sinus issues. And then things like autoimmune. I've worked with over 600 people in the Live Disease Free Academy, and I, it's been such an incredible privilege helping them to recover from all kinds of chronic disease. And in every single person that's dealing with chronic disease, they have so many symptoms of fungal overgrowth. Uh, they've had it for years, many, many years. So whether it is neurological diseases or things like cancer or diabetes or any other chronic disease, fungus plays a huge role. And it is this silent, quiet infection. It doesn't give us the high fever. The doctors can't pick it up. And this is where I see, and there's this huge connection with cancer and fungus where somebody can be super healthy, athletic, active, and then boom, they're hit with third or fourth stage cancer, didn't really have any warning signs. I, I've seen this quite often throughout my life, which is crazy. But when you go back and you ask them you know, more details, like, have you had any of these symptoms? And oh yeah, 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 but I just thought it was you know, part of life, part of getting older. But they're not symptoms that would like disable us, like with multiple sclerosis, et cetera. So they're just little things. And our, our medical community, our practitioners, they, they don't recognize it as a problem. Oh, yeah, you've had a few yeast infections. Oh, you've got rashes and fingernail and toenail fungus. Oh, you're allergic to penicillin. No problem. And they do not understand that it plays candida albicans and other fungi play a huge role in chronic disease. They have to be treated. And what we've learned with our students too is that it's not just candida albicans. So for the past 30 years, there's been a huge emphasis on candida on the internet, in books, et cetera. But again, there are different types of fungi. There's molds, especially if we've lived in a moldy home. So we can have molds growing in us. Aspergillus is another common type of fungus. So candida albicans has gotten a lot of attention. There are a lot of different cousins or different species of candida that can also be a problem. But so, you know, first focus on understanding fungal overgrowth is a big problem that needs to be addressed properly. And also another thing we've learned is that the parasites are such a big part of chronic disease. And if we don't treat the parasites that are depositing their waste in us, their bacteria, their waste material, that is the perfect breeding ground for the fungus to grow. So, and that's why it can be a persistent fungal problem because we have those other infections that are promoting or perpetuating the fungal overgrowth. So this is a quite a complex thing, but it's something that has to be addressed. It's very, very important. So I'm going to go to, first of all, I'm going to go to your comments and your questions. But before we do that, it's time to celebrate. I love celebrating. Uh, I just wanted to share a few successes that have come in over the past week and a half. So one student share. So these are students that are in the wellness in the academy, the Live Disease Free Academy right now. They are recovering from cr chronic disease right now. And so they always send me their updates and send me, so I'm just gonna share a few of them with you. So one student wrote, health-wise this week, I've had some small improvements. My energy is improving this week. I've had minimal pain and less numbness. Now 
I know this is a direct result of starving the baddies, she said. So she's at the eating plan. So with the academy, we first stop feeding the infections by greatly reducing the carbohydrates. Lots of vegetables, but low carb. And she's noticing already improvements just with the eating plan. I'm super excited to go to the next stage, which is supporting the body. Another student who's gone through at least a couple of cycles of treatments, she has PLS. And she just shared an update on our Facebook group of our students. So that's a different one, a different group. But she shared, I have been trying to jump for more than four years. I could never get any air. My feet would not, my feet would just not move off the floor. Now I can do it. So she sent us a little video of her being able to jump with her heels, getting them off the floor, her feet, all of her feet. This is PLS. It's an incurable disease. She is treating infections and I'm so proud of her. She is going to be a, she is a huge leader in the PLS community, but I know she's going to impact a lot of lives. Then we have an, another student. I just want to keep uh, the names confidential because these are people that are working right now. I'm feeling better. My energy levels are improving up and down a little bit at the start here, but overall I'm feeling better and I'm sleeping better. Today I took my kids. I drove to the supermarket on my own. That's a big wow for me. For a long time, I haven't been able to do that. I normally str struggle with carrying my son due to poor balance and weakness in my legs, but today I did it. That's so cool. And she is also just not even treating it. She's just in the prep phase, stop feeding the infections and support the body. Another student who is in just the eating phase, my main symptom is fatigue and brain fog and I believe I'm starting to have slight improvement after just one week on the eating plan. And then another gentleman, the brain fog is clearing up, anxiety is dropping off to low levels and I'm sleeping through the night and my energy level has greatly improved. I'm walking with better balance, even starting to take stairs in the parkade. The craving for unhealthy items is starting to drop off and I'm starting to use light weights. So he's starting to exercise. So as our students are feeling better and better, I encourage them to take back their mobility, to take back their strength. And so this is just the eating plan. He hasn't even started treating yet. Another student, I raked five hours on Friday. So just this past Friday, and I was pleasantly surprised that I was not stiff or sore on Saturday. And I am having more endurance and I'm sleeping better and I'm waking up feeling more rested. So these are all the things that we want to see before our students start to treat the infections because they've had them for so long. This is people that are diagnosed with chronic disease. Their body has suffered so much. So we want to make sure that we are able to remove toxins easily, that we're supporting the body in many different ways, that we're feeling a tiny little bit better, and then we start on the attack. And then another student noticed that um, she shared, she did the first treatment um, started the first treatment of two antiparasitic drugs and she gave me feedback on it. She said that my overall pain levels have decreased a level and my upper back pain has improved also. And I'm also having more energy and feeling less tired. A lot of people that have pain, pain, <laughs> back pain, it's not just caused from, you know, part of life or pulling a muscle. Yes, if you've injured it, for sure, that can definitely be an issue. But for a lot of people, the back pain is parasites. And they're actually finding parasites in the bone marrow of people's backs. So, And when they treat that, then they are finding that the back pain is subsiding, which is crazy. So another student, she has done at least one treatment cycle. So this is where we hit the parasites for two weeks and then we stop and then we hit the fungus for at least 10 days and then we stop and then we take a break and we let them just to come out of their hiding places and then we hit them again. And we have to go through several cycles, at least four to six for people that have chronic disease, maybe more. So this student shared that my workouts are getting stronger and I was on the elliptical for 15 minutes plus two sets on four machines wrapping up 30 minutes. 
able to walk out and go to physiotherapy. My core is getting stronger. I feel very good and healthy. I'm able to do a lot, a lot more housework and work outside preparing our plants for winter this past weekend. I'm looking forward to going to an event this weekend. I will be walking up many stairs and I'm so excited that I can now. So she also has MS. All of these students have MS except for the one person that had PLS. And I shouldn't say they all have, but most of the ones on that I'm just sharing with you do. I have students with all kinds of conditions. I'm making a lot of improvements in my balance and my left leg is so much more flexible. And then another student, yeah, it's pretty cool. Another student shared, so this is the benefit of catching chronic disease like MS early. And that is my goal, is that as we speak more and as the wellness champions help us to get the word out, if we can catch people when they're just newly diagnosed and they're able to treat the infections quicker, it's a lot easier. It still takes work. It's still a learning curve. It's still a process. But you can, for sure, when you catch it really early, there's a much greater likelihood that you can have full, full recovery. So this student, she's just... She was following the eating plan, supporting the body, and starting to, just starting to treat. The treatment, she's like, I'm tolerating them really well. And she said, I'm so close to being symptom free. And she's just starting her first treatment cycle. Little numbness in my big toe, my big right toe and foot. That comes and goes, but that's about it. That's what she's feeling right now. And there are days that I go without any symptoms, and I'm really tempted to email you and say that I'm symptom-free, but then a random symptom will pop up so close, but not there yet. I'm excited for that day to come. And then the last one that I wanted to share with you, which is really super important. So this is a student that has been suffering with Lyme disease for I can't remember how many years, but she did go to Lyme litter doctors. She was on lots of antibiotics. She just wasn't getting anywhere. She was really sick, lots of different symptoms. And so she joined the, the academy and she's been working really hard and she's passed a ton of parasites. I've, we've got hundreds of pictures of parasites. I need to update that for any of you that want to see what these parasites look like that are coming out again it doesn't mean that the big big worms are the ones that are causing all of the neurological symptoms sometimes it can be fungus right in inside our body but also it can be the smaller parasites all the way up into our central nervous system so with this student she has done a couple of different treatment cycles and then i encouraged we encouraged her to go in and be tested to see which of like through energy testing to see which of the treatments are more helpful for her. And she did that. And she tested well for an antiparasitic treatment that, that we haven't really commonly seen used. Again, we've only been doing this for a couple of years. But this treatment has been just magic for her. So she started on it, treating parasites. And she found that, you know, working up to the full dose was too strong for her. So she stopped. And then she started to just start with the smaller dose. Again, she's working with a doctor. She's working with me. So she's she's not just making this up by herself. She's and we're working with pharmacists. So, but but doing this, she said, um, she just finished that. She's not done her the full cycle yet, but she's just finished one particular treatment that was really golden for her. And she shared, right now, I feel so much better, better than I felt in years. I feel as if I finally had a really big shift in my health. I have more energy. I feel physically stronger. I'm able to exercise more, less anxious and feeling less overwhelmed, calmer, feeling more focused, feeling happier, less reactive to things. And I have a greater sense of well-being and I started to feel like my old self again. Still have a ways to go. Thank you so much. And yeah, lots of kind words. So this is what we do is we help the students to treat the infections that are causing chronic disease and fungus is still a really important part of the treatment again it there is it's kind of like which came first the chicken or the egg i don't know did the fungal overgrowth come first did the parasites come first did they come together but what we do know is that when you're treating all of this, that people just get better and better and better. I'm going to go to your questions here.
Okay, oh, 64 comments. <laughs> a lot of them's high, I'm sure. Hi, Alia. Hi, Patty. Is there a local Fargo ND that I can talk to? Um, the problem is, Patty, most of the integrative practitioners, they don't know this yet. It's so, it's ridiculous because it's, it's an art or skill that's been lost. We're treating all of our pets, right? We're treating all of our pets and we don't, for some reason in, in the developed countries, they think, oh, well, humans don't get parasites unless we're traveling to a third world country, which is nothing farther from the truth. So with respect to candida, yes, you can work with a naturopath, but it's very, your, your success will be very limited. I don't know what you have or how sick you are, but if you are if you're quite healthy, you have no disease, yeah, you can go and you can be tested with your naturopath. Usually, if they can do some type of energy testing, that would be helpful. But again, if you want to really bring your health up to a high level or if you're dealing with chronic disease, we're finding that the herbs are just not enough. And most of the uh, naturopathic physicians, even chiropractors, Anyone that's treating infections, candida, they're still focusing on protozoa, which are small microbes, uh, which are easier to treat with herbs and fungus. They're, they're using different herbs, for example. But the problem is those herbs are not really going throughout the body to treat the, the fungal overgrowth and the infections that are deep rooted into our body all the way into our central nervous system. So I have a page, it's called Evidence That Multiple Sclerosis Is an Infectious Disease. It is on my livediseasefree.com website. So my website is livediseasefree.com and you just go to uh, livediseasefree.com forward slash MS hyphen infections with an S. If you're at a place where you're like, Pam, this was really interesting. I've never heard this before. I want to do some more research. Watch my videos. I've got lots of videos on YouTube and on Facebook, Live Disease Free. But if you're at that place where, Pam, I've, I have done so much research. I have been, you know, I've tried all kinds of different therapies. I've worked with integrative practitioners. I'm not really getting anywhere. I need somebody who's experienced at treating these infections. Then make sure to to reach out to me. What you do is you'll see that in the either the feed of this video or above it, you will see that there is a link to watch my free masterclass training where I talk about these infections, I talk about the steps to recover, I share a bunch of wonderful case studies. And so what I'd like you to do is just listen to that. If it resonates with you, if it makes sense, you're like, oh man, I'm so ready, then book, then, um, you click on, there will be a, a little place where you can click on it and you can fill out a form and then we will send you the information and uh, basically we'll give you something that you can learn about the academy and then if you're ready, you can join and you can, and if you do join, I need to talk to you, I need to meet you because we're gonna start this journey together and it's a three month process. Next year will be amazing, it'll be the best year you've had. Joy, we've got tons and tons of brand new wellness champions over the past, three weeks, two to three weeks, it'll be an exciting journey, a life changing journey for you. So make sure to watch my masterclass training if you're, if you need a plan to treat these infections. All right. And a last couple here. So the inside of your mouth is tender. So this is where you could Mary Lou check with your doctor and you could ask him to see if, if that is thrush, if it is thrush, then, um, it's difficult because they like to give nice tap with sugar in it and that is not very helpful. Um, sometimes colloidal silver, rinsing with colloidal silver seems to be very, very helpful. Um, so I personally don't like to use a lot of colloidal silver just because uh, it is helpful, but you have to make sure you use the right product because if you use, if you're taking in too much colloidal silver, you have, you run the risk of having your skin turn kind of a, a bluey gray color. But if it's the right product and you're using it, just what I would do is hold it in my mouth for a while and rinse it. And that definitely is helpful for knocking back candida in your mouth. And so whoever mentioned about the canker sore, you can try that too. Yes, Barry Lou, that was you. So why don't you try that? Um, colloidal silver, you can probably find some in the health food store. 
and rinse your mouth. But I would hold it in my mouth for five minutes or so if you can um, and just swish it around, especially to the area that could be helpful. But you could go to the doctor. But again, if you get the nice down with sugar, it doesn't make a lot of sense to be taking in a bunch of sugar with treating yeast at all. That's the best food for yeast. Karen, you want to address fungal overgrowth, please tell you how. So number one, you got to stop feeding it, really reduce the carbs. You can watch my videos. It depends what you want to do. If you're a healthy person and you just have some candida, watch my videos and I share how low carb to go. You'll feel a ton better, even if it's parasites also that you're dealing with. And then support the body. And I've got lots of videos. So a lot of people are using those. If you're at the place like Pam, no, I... I want I want to treat these infections really well, the parasites, the fungus, etc. I'm dealing with chronic disease, then watch my master class training. And then you can become a wellness champion. And I mentioned the fungus. And you know, for people like myself, I was diagnosed with MS 30 years ago. And I had a lot of fungal overgrowth. I didn't know it. I never had a vaginal yeast infection, but I had a lot of constipation and other symptoms, gas, bloating, a lot more of the gut issues. So the key is that once you treat them, once you knock back the parasites and the fungus, you're, and your taste buds change. Like I've never gone back to the old way of eating. I love the way that I eat. I love the way that I feel. And so you have to understand that if you go back to the old and you end up feeding them again, that you can have problems again. So you have to really decide what's important to you in life and make that decision and start to say that living my life is so much more important than what I put in my mouth. But what I put in my mouth now, I really love. It tastes so good because your taste buds will change and you will enjoy different types of foods that you appreciate a lot more than before. Um, can we kill aspergillus too? Yes, absolutely. And this is where, like in the program, our students are tested by energy testing to see um, which treatments respond best to them. And when you're dealing with chronic disease, sometimes the anti-parasitic drug or antifungal drugs are a little bit more helpful because they work more systemically and they're very well tolerated if you're using them properly with your doctor. And again, it's very important not to mix drugs together, and that's why our students are working safely. So for example, Diflucan and Sporanox, those are two systemic antifungal treatments. Women can find the Diflucan for like a fluconazole for a three-day treatment for over-the-counter for treating yeast, just knocking it back a little bit, but it's not enough to treat systemic candida. And we don't stay on those drugs for a long period of time because they're strong. So you never mix them with other drugs and you don't stay on them for long. You have to work with um, a, some kind of a practitioner for sure. And Vanessa, you lived in a moldy home, and I've seen that in a lot of my students that they lived in a moldy home for years before they came down with chronic disease. But aspergillus, Susan, I just want to go back. Aspergillus would be treated more with Sporanox than with Diflucan. And hi, Husan. Can Candida get back? Can it come back? Oh, yes, I already explained that. It can definitely grow back if you've knocked it back. So don't expect that you're going to take a pill and, and totally rid your body of it. Because if you've had fungal infections growing for 10, 20, 30 years in your body, remember that root structure that it grows deep in your tissue. And these antifungals are going to knock it back significantly to the point where you're symptom-free. But then if you start to bring back the old lifestyle, the a lot of sugar, etc. It definitely can come back. Hi, Susan. Can candida hide heavy metals? I'm not sure about that. I do know that I've heard that before. Yes, especially mercury. But I know for sure that parasites they will take up a lot of heavy metals in our body. So they will have a much higher percentage of heavy metals than we do. It's like two or three hundred percent more heavy metals in the parasites, but I do know that candida really thrives in an, an environment with more mercury for sure. Hi, Maureen. 
you said that that you kind of feel drunk after eating for years. And yeah, you probably did. Major bloating and psoriasis. Psoriasis is really commonly linked with fungus for sure. You're very welcome, Leslie. Hi, Anita. You have constipation and bloating, bladder issues, infections. Anita, you need to treat them. Hello, coach. Hi, Hussan. And Martha. So you're, you're glad you're a month into removing all the added sugars. Good. It's so important. Remember, when you are binging on sugars and processed carbs, those infections that are making you disabled are binging with you. They are going to produce a ton of poison, create a lot more inflammation, create a lot more symptoms in you. Not worth it. Retroviral flares. I, I truly believe, you know, I've been looking at the research of the viruses and the retroviruses, and I just see that my students that treat these infections really well, that they become symptom-free, and I think viruses are getting too much of a, too much attention. Yes, drop foot, Maurice, drop foot can totally resolve if you treat the infections really well. And it, again, it's a combination of treating parasites and fungus. All right, I think sarcoidosis, yes, sarcoidosis is inflammation in the body and it is caused by infections. That's what it's caused by. And I had a very dear friend die in her 50s of sarcoidosis, somebody who was biking, et cetera. Um, but again, these are these silent infections that our standard of care does not recognize. And it's not solely their fault because they receive a certain training and they don't get they don't have tests they haven't been trained to recognize them but again sarcoidosis is chronic infections in the body which need to be treated and absolutely you can recover for that but you have but you've got to work with somebody who has experience and at this point it's really challenging to find somebody with experience it's really really hard so martha you've been on diflucan four times in the past 18 months that's right. It's not worth just taking Diflucan. Um, the fungus will just keep growing. You have to change the terrain in your body. It's, and you don't want the fungus to become resistant to the, can, to the Diflucan or else you're not going to be able to use it in the future. And yeast, candida, is notorious for becoming resistant to treatments, just like antibiotics are. Okay, last couple of questions here. I thought it was going to be short, but lots of good questions. Sorry for the little coughing fit. I don't know where that came from. Maria, you were diagnosed with MS six years ago, and for the first time, you broke out with a severe case of eczema all over your hands. And unless I'm on steroids, I'm miserable. You've got to treat from the inside out. So the eczema is a manifestation of what's going on inside of you, which is a bunch of infection. Awesome that you found me here, Martha, Helen. Um, do you have a treatment for halitosis, please? So halitosis could be, it's infection. A lot of times it's hidden dental infections that you may not even feel pain, but you may have dental infections. And then also it could be from just your GI tract, et cetera, from your um, mostly dental infections though. So again, so you're doing... Uh, chlorophyll liquid daily that's not going to be enough for you um, you have to treat systemically you have to return the microbes in your body back into balance that includes in your mouth and you will not have halitosis anymore hi Shane so you started a very low carb diet so just you know make make sure to watch our my videos on the eating plan because there is a keto diet and we don't follow keto, we, number one, don't have dairy products. When you have chronic disease, it does not work. Butter's okay. But then the other thing is that we have a lot of vegetables. We have a lot of nutrition. Nutrition is so important for healing. And with a keto diet, it's more meat and fat and dairy products, very little vegetables. But we have a ton of vegetables, but we're keeping them low-carb vegetables. So you started a very low-carb diet, actually started today, should you wait with the antifungal orals. 
Um, if you're just going to use if you've got candida capsules, I don't know anything about you. I don't know if you have chronic disease or not. If you're just a relatively healthy person, but you've got like gut symptoms, then it's totally fine to try the candida capsules. If it's a blend, start slowly. So just to make sure that you tolerate it, but you can start right away. But if you're cheating, if you're eating high carb, and then you're going to take the capsules hoping that that's going to offset it, it's not. Candida is such a hardy microbe. It is the recycler of the world. It's one of the fungi that they're the recyclers of the world. So that is why they're so challenging to treat. Awesome. I'm so happy that explained a lot for you, Martha and Maria. Hello. And Kat, Kathy. And I talked about the foot drop already. Okay. I've answered all your questions. Yay. So I'll be back next week and I'm going to be talking about, what am I talking about? Um, oh, Lyme, Lyme symptoms. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, because we've talked about the parasite symptoms. That was really popular. I think the general population is really starting to learn that parasites are a much bigger problem than they thought. Today we talked about fungal or candida symptoms. And then next week we're going to be talking about the symptoms that we get when we are dealing with these infections that are associated with Lyme disease. Thank you for all the love. Make sure that if you're at that place where you're ready, you're ready to take back your life, you're ready to treat these infections really seriously. You want next year to be an amazing year, kind of kicking start, kick start off the next year. Uh, you'll be in a completely different place in three months. Make sure to watch my masterclass training reach out to me and you can become a wellness champion right away. So take care and bye-bye for now.